I'm Sam Mortensen. I'm a developer in Portland, Oregon. We just had like the craziest heat wave, just as an anecdote. Uh, we were the third hottest city in the world yesterday. It was like 116. So uh, I didn't get a huge amount of time to prepare because I was just kind of like too hot to be bothered. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that's, that's a quick, weird intro. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, Drupal which is CMS and Tome, which is a Drupal module, which is kind of like a WordPress extension I made that turns Drupal into a static site generator. Uh, I'll say before I start that I've presented about this a few times since I published it in like 2018, but always to a Drupal audience. So this is the first time I'm presenting to people that already know a ton about static sites. So I had to edit the slides a lot to assume that you all already know uh, as much as you can about how static sites work. So it's going to be more Drupal focused. With that in mind, uh, let's do a brief overview of Drupal. It's the third most popular open source CMS. It's right behind Joomla and WordPress. Uh, they're all written in PHP, but don't let that discourage you. Uh, it's the newest version of Drupal is actually written, written pretty well uh, and looks nothing like the old stuff. So worth, worth taking a look at. It was also until recently in the top five most popular CMS, just like overall on the web. It just recently, like this year, got knocked out by some proprietary ones. So I think Squarespace and Wix knocked it out. Um, so until recently, it was you know, one of the most popular. Uh, so just to kind of communicate why Drupal is cool, I'm just going to talk about a few things that Drupal can do that static sites usually can't. And I know I'm talking to like a room full of experts. So yeah, I'll say usually. Uh, one is that non-technical people can edit content. Uh, you may not consider it very technical to edit Markdown, but for like marketers or you know really basic content editors, it's extremely technical. You basically have to learn a new language. You have to open a text editor. You might have to use Git, even if you're using like the GitHub UI. Uh, it's kind of really far from the experience people are used to with the CMS. Uh, that's very different from saying I have um, you know, NewYorkTimes.com, I can click log in and click edit and change something and click save, and then it's done. <laughs> like that process uh, should not be undervalued. It's, it's a really big deal for people. Uh, when I say uh, people can edit stuff in the UI like that, I'm talking about UIs like this. Uh, this is a what you see is what you get WYSIWYG editor called CK Editor. Uh, it's one of the oldest and most popular out there. A lot of CMSs use it. This is the version Drupal uses, which is CK Editor 4. Um, you can think of it as like a visual way to edit HTML. Like it's if you click View Source in the top right there, you literally just see HTML. And uh, because it's using HTML, it's really open. You can basically do anything, construct any uh, crazy nested div you want with this UI. You can also do stuff like image editing, formatting. Uh, there's collaborative editing sometimes in CK Editor 5. Uh, it's pretty cool. And for as weird as it is, uh, it is user friendly. So that's cool. Another huge thing I would say these are the big two is that you can actually change how a site looks and what it does without code. Uh, I know like no code and low code are, are like buzzwordy now, but this is basically what CMSs have always been. I mean, WordPress and Drupal have been no code forever. <laughs> um, uh, you can actually go in the UI and not just edit content. Uh, you can actually edit how your site works. You can add a form. Maybe there's a crazy form builder that lets you have a multi-step form, and you can submit to another third party. You can do all sorts of stuff uh, without touching the code base. And non-technical people do this, as scary as that sounds. You know, They actually add features to their site with no developer on staff. Uh, so it's pretty crazy and, and unbelievable. Uh, for people that haven't worked with CMSs and don't know that like there are companies that have zero developers and have cool sites. Uh, here's a UI from the newer version of Drupal. It's called Layout Builder. Uh, this is just an example of kind of an inline editor or visual uh, you know, site builder. You're not editing content here. You're actually kind of like placing things that may display content. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's new. It's very similar to WordPress's Gutenberg. Uh, but the point is, you know, you can go to the front page and like edit listings of like recipes in this instance. You can add uh, little newsletter signup forms. You can do all sorts of stuff that have nothing to do with like 
what we would consider a markdown file, which represents one piece of content or like one page with maybe some fields. Uh, here's another crazy page from Drupal. This is a, a module called Views, which is really important to Drupal. And I know it's like a lot to breathe in, but basically it's a very visual way to build SQL queries. It can also do stuff like have exposed forms. You can kind of build search pages with this. Uh, I wanted to show this because while uh, the user experience is probably not good, it's an example of how much power uh, Drupal will give site builders, where people will create uh, views of content, which could be a page, it could be search, it could be anything that you know you build off of SQL, and uh, you know non-technical people use this interface. Of course, they have to have to learn it, which probably is a thing. But you know they they don't have to be a developer to build entirely new experiences. So pretty cool. Um, another thing is a lot of hard problems are like table stakes for CMS. It's stuff that I don't think anyone that works on a CMS would like uh, lord over you and be like, you can't do this. <laughs> it would just be, we've been doing this for so long, we don't even think about it. Uh, and so I'm going to just go through a list of those. And again, these are like my opinions. These aren't necessarily things you can't do. Uh, one is multilingual. Uh, Drupal has fantastic multilingual support. WordPress has big extensions that do it. But basically, you can edit a node, uh, a piece of content in Drupal, and click Translate and put it into multiple languages. You can do that on like a field basis. Like you could just translate the body of something, but maybe leave the taxonomy the same. You can translate the user interface. Uh, you can do like microsites for each language. It's it's pretty amazing, uh, and it's not something that like static sites on day one were like, yeah, of course we support multilingual. Um, yeah, it also supports multiple editors. You know, many people can log in and edit content at the same time. You don't have to think about like who's committing, what the merge conflict is. I have like PRs open. Uh, none of those concepts exist. You can even edit concurrently sometimes, like Google Docs. But I would say that's kind of like an edge feature. It's not super common. Uh, you can have drafts of content. This is pretty hard in static sites. Uh, draft is like uh, edit of a content that's not ready to go live yet. I think with most static site generators, you would probably make a branch and have an open PR and then merge that when it's ready. Uh, which is totally fine, but maybe not like as intuitive of just as just clicking new branch, uh, new draft, and then putting it into review in a CMS, uh, where maybe you have a complex review process. So very different. Uh, you can edit images. This isn't like you know Gatsby JS that maybe makes a bunch of versions of an image. It's like actually you upload an image, you can crop it, you can set the point that uh, different responsive images maybe focus on. It's called a focal point. You can do all that in the UI, which is great. I talked about moderation already. Another thing that people don't think about is like redirects. You know, a site's age, uh, content tends to move around, and you don't want broken links. You know, people have all these broken link checkers. Drupal can solve that. There's modules you can install that do things like, oh, you edited a page, you changed the path. I'm going to make a redirect from the old path to the new path, so your SEO is not messed up. Um, it's pretty cool. And there's inline editing, which I kind of talked about before. So the point of this is like, you know. We may look at this as static site people and be like, oh my god, what's the solution for this? But in CMS, it's like people just expect this stuff to work, and it, and it usually works quite well. Um, I'm also ignoring any features that are like unfair. Obviously, a CMS has a back end, and you can have users, forms, search, commerce, all sorts of stuff that with static sites you typically need um, you know, other stuff for, maybe like a third party or, or your own weird Node.js back end. So, um, but obviously, you're all here, and I'm here because static sites have a lot of value. Uh, you know all the reasons. For me, it's maybe more simple. It's just uh, price, performance, security. Uh, that, to me, is the big deal. So uh, one thing is you know, when you're thinking about, OK, I use Drupal or I use a CMS, and I want to have a static site, a lot of people go right to a headless CMS. Um, which I know we have people on the call that like work at companies that do this. So again, you're the expert. But uh, headless CMSs also have problems that are solved with the traditional CMS, where your front end and back end are basically on the same server, same stack. Uh, stuff like content previews it might be easy with published content, but if you have like an unauthenticated API and you have like a private draft you want to preview, that's a hard problem. Uh, Typically, you have to like figure out, OK, I have a beautiful nested navigation builder in WordPress. Now I have to like figure out how to shunt that into Gatsby.js. You know, am I going to rewrite it? How's it going to work? 
uh, you lose a ton of site builder power. I think this is almost just a given unless you work really hard to fix it. Um, you lose that ability for people to say, oh, I want to put a listing of three pieces of content at this part of the page. And then you're like, well, that's hard coded in a React uh, component. You know, you can't just do that in the CMS. Uh, you also now kind of have two skill sets or two sets of developers. You have people that know how to develop features for the editors in the CMS, and you have people that develop the front end. And back in the day, these were the same people. You know, being a full stack developer meant that, yeah, I can make this form better for you to edit a piece of content, and I, I can make it render better too. And now maybe those people don't have all the same skills. Uh, and then there's weird issues with caching. Like, uh, this, my example was like, I press save. Why isn't production updated? You know, now there's caching on the API level in the CMS. There's caching in the front end. Uh, there might be discrepancies there, like when the rest, last build ran. Uh, all of these are new problems that don't exist if you just have a normal CMS. Um, so this is why I created Tome. Uh, Tome's a module for Drupal, which is basically like an extension. Uh, and I said here, it's kind of like a boring but fast static site generator for Drupal. Uh, and the real reason I made this is when I started doing static sites, uh, at least with Drupal, I just thought, like, why do I need to know any of this? Like, why do I need JavaScript to make a static site? There's nothing special about JavaScript and Markdown that is required for a static site. It's just very popular static site builders uh, use those. So this was kind of me being a lazy developer and saying, I already have Drupal. It works fine. I just want a static version of it. Um, yes, maybe it's stubborn, too. So. Tome is a Drupal extension that kind of comes in two parts that you can use together. Uh, one on the left is the Tome static. It's like the static site generator. And this is the boring part to me. It's basically like wget recursive. It's a crawler. But it's way smarter than that with a lot of complex things I've done that um, would take up too many slides. But uh, it's, it's basically a very, very good spider that runs within the CMS instead of you know, running outside making HTTP requests like wget. Uh, it's really fast. It's much faster than uh, any other way to generate a static site for Drupal, I'm sure. One cool thing is it supports caching. This is huge. So when you rerun a build, it'll only generate pages that are uncached. That means your like, uncached build, the, the you know, clean build is very slow, possibly. But every build after that, it's super fast, which is great. Uh, it's also smart. It does some rewriting of uh, pages to make them compatible with static sites. I put an example here. You know, Drupal has pagination. Let's say you have 10 pages of, uh, of content, and that's done with query parameters. But if I'm exporting an HTML file, I can't really have a query parameter in the name. It's just that's just not how web routing works. So it'll do stuff like rewrite those. So in this example, it's question mark page equals one. That's page one. And it rewrites that to be slash page slash one, which you can actually export as a static file and serve uh, just fine. So it's smart about stuff like that. Um, that's from static. There's not a lot more to say. I think it's really good and really boring. But what's cool about it is you can enable it right on top of any Drupal site right now. And it works without many other considerations. Uh, the other half is the weird part. And it's called Tome Sync. And what this does is it lets you store your entire Drupal site in Git. You know, the part that I think is actually really cool about normal static site generators like Gatsby or Jekyll is that your content is stored in Git unless you are doing like a headless CMS. Um, that has a lot of value, especially for teams that want that. I know I ragged on it when I talked about the editor experience, but um, there's a lot of cool things about it. So what this does is as you edit content, it exports things to JSON. And then you can commit it. And you can actually tear down your entire Drupal site at that point. You can like nuke it from orbit. And then at some point in the future, you can uh, re-enable it. Um, you can reinstall it from Git. Um, yeah, so I think that's really cool. The thing is, this may make sense to you, because you use other static site generators. Um, but it's actually super confusing for people that use a CMS. Uh, like they, they don't understand. They say, I already have a Drupal site running just fine. Um, why do I need this? So yeah, anyway. Um, so those are the two parts. Uh, what's cool is you know, I've talked about no code. You can use these from the user interface, too. You don't, you don't have to use the command line. Uh, this is a really big deal in Drupal. People expect everything to be in the user interface. So this is the user inter interface I ha have for it. There's not a lot to say about it. But 
you can go in here, you can put in the URL of your production static site, um, you can generate it, and then you can preview it in the UI, you can deploy places, you can download a zip of it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. And this is kind of the summary of what it does. You can store your content in Git and export your site to HTML. Uh, it's very cool. These are kind of the use cases that I identified while working on it. Uh, one is, you know, I want to use Drupal, but I don't want to pay for hosting or get hacked. So that's what I was talking about before. You know, I'm cheap and I'm a security engineer full time, so I'm also very nervous. And I would rather have something that's practically unhackable. At least there's no PHP to hack and uh, very cheap or free. Another is people want to archive sites at some point. Not all sites are meant to live forever. A lot of marketers will make what's called like a microsite or um, what are those called? Some sort of marketing material, like a single page site that's marketing some new drug, a new product. And these are launched once and then they live forever on like mycooldrug.com or mycoolnikeshoe.com. Uh, in that case, you may want to use Drupal for a lot of reasons, but you don't really want to have it live forever. So that's a good thing. Uh, another that people may not be more aware of is I want to run Drupal in an edit domain and have a secure front end. Uh, we use the term edit domain at a company I worked at before, but basically it's like a segmented uh, area where you access the CMS. Basically, it's protected by some sort of firewall that will allow stuff like VPN connections or an IP range from an office. Uh, and so that's where you can edit content. And then the actual public facing thing is perfectly secure because it's never making API calls to the backend. Um, and no one can access the backend hypothetically unless they're through the firewall. But really, the main point is I want a static site, and I don't want to change how I work. That's why I made it. Uh, a lot of people use Drupal. They don't want to learn anything new, or they just don't have resources or time, but they still want all the advantages uh, that we know about, and that's why we use static sites. Um, I will say, you know, if you're watching so far, you probably already need to be interested in Drupal or want some of the features I talked about to use Tome. I, I won't say that it's a better like developer experience or like better experience overall than any other static site generator. That's not, that's not it. I'll say it's probably the best Drupal static site generator experience you can have, but that may not be saying a lot. So um, in addition to those two modules I talked about, I have worked on a few kind of ecosystem modules that make this usable. Uh, one is Lunar. You may know Lunar. It's like a client-side search that's kind of similar to Apache Solar, but not really. And you can enable this module and, again, through the UI, generate a search index and have search for your static Drupal site. So that's pretty cool. I have a Netlify integration that's more experimental, but it has that one-click deploy thing where you can just use their API to ship your site to Netlify without having to deal with uh, Git or anything else. Another is Tome Git. It's also experimental, but basically it adds a button in the UI that just like commits and pushes all your changes. Because I found while I was using Tome on my local machine, like basically running Drupal on localhost, it was kind of annoying to open the command line or even the GitHub UI and commit things. Because I never had merge conflicts. I'm working alone. So I just kind of want to like commit and push you know, incrementally. So this lets you do that. Um, now this is like a click baby part of the presentation, but uh, it is real. <laughs> um, some other cool things about Tome I'm proud of is that I had incremental builds working from practically day one. Uh, because Drupal's caching is so good, and because I've you know been doing it so long, uh, yeah, I had incremental builds working really early on. You could run a build and then run it again, and you it would only generate content that wasn't cached. It was funny to me when like Gatsby JS announced this for Gatsby Cloud because I was. Just thinking, it's like, wait, why is this like a hard problem? Um, and there's a lot of reasons why for them it's a hard problem. They don't control the data source. But uh, I think they just recently released it in V3 or something, and I've had it working for a while. So that's just cool. It shows like there's something technically good about what I've built. Um, I also think it's really fast. I will say it's really hungry for resources. It supports a high level of concurrency. Um, but it's very fast. I did a test once I called Big Tome, and I basically took a bunch of static site generators and had a 10,000 page uh, site, and all the images were responsive if I could do that, which means you have to generate a lot of versions of an image per page. And yeah, Tome was very, very fast. Uh, so I thought that was cool. Um, I'm not going to say it's like the fastest today, but it's, it's very fast. Uh, 
another cool thing is I'm not selling you anything. I, I have no product. The company I work for has nothing to do with Drupal or static sites or Tome, uh, and I have no plans to sell anything. So uh, you're free to use it. I'll never make you pay for a cloud service. Uh, yeah, so if you want to get started, I have a website called tome.fyi. It's kind of old, but it's still valid, and there's a good getting started guide. Uh, you have to have some PHP environment set up locally. It, it talks about the requirements, but it's like PHP, SQLite are required. Uh, there's also a code base. If you didn't know, Drupal doesn't use GitHub. Like Drupal is actually older than GitHub, so we still use our own uh, Git hosting and our own issue tracking. So that's where you go for code. And you can email me questions on my site. Uh, again, I'm not selling anything. There's no analytics, so feel free to click around a million times. I'll never, uh, I'll never track you or send you a newsletter. And that's it. Uh, that's all I have. So hopefully, with the extra time, I have time for questions. Let's quit. Yeah, yeah. That, that was great, Sam. Thank you so much. Um, I think I like the. I know you're not trying to sell a product or anything, but I actually like the the whole marketing angle of making your your marketing pitch be that it's boring. Um, I never really hear people pitching their products as boring, and um, I know it's a little tongue in cheek and it's a little, like it's fun for people, but it also I feel like a lot of people actually are looking for something boring. <clears throat> like um, we we don't all need the next blazing fast whatever. It's like sometimes you're just like I, I want something to work and I need to be productive, and um, I just thought that was really interesting. Um, so Thanks. I had a few questions. I don't know before I, I ask a couple. Um, did anyone have any burning questions they want to start off with? Okay, I'll hop into it. So, um, I, so I know uh, Drupal eight to, to Drupal nine is a is a pretty seamless upgrade path. So I'm curious of the state of Tome uh, being functional in Drupal nine and beyond. Is that something that you're you're thinking about, or is it something that's already here? Yeah, it's it's already there. I don't think I had many changes. It was mostly like uh, testing broke completely or something funny like that. But yeah, because Drupal's API is pretty stable, I expect it to work for a while. So I don't think there were any changes needed, but I, it, the tests run with Drupal 9. So you're good to go. Great. And um, do you have any kind of like usage statistics or just like uh, anecdotes you've heard from people using it? Like, um, I, I, so I used to manage a bunch of just um, kind of sub site Drupal things for my my own personal use. Um, and I had the same problem, like, you know, security updates every week, um, which I, I know you, I think you you run the security team. Uh, so thank you for all the that stuff. But um, it, it was like, hard to keep up with sometimes for these sites that weren't really generating revenue. So um, do you know if it's like mostly hobbyists like me who are just like trying to keep some sites up that are using it? Or are there some larger groups that are using it for the, the performance and security aspects of it? Yeah. Um... This is a hard, so I don't have any analytics in it because in the open source world, if you put tracking in your stuff, it's like pretty bad. People react pretty poorly. So all I have is uh, the tracking that Drupal.org does, and that only tracks uh, like installs. And so that's really hard because you may only run a tone build like once every few months if it's a site that's not updated frequently. So I have no idea if my users are like, way overestimated or underestimated. But right now, it says I have 300 like continuous users, uh, which is very low. I have another module that has a lot, like 20,000 or 30,000 or something. So it's funny. I, this took me the most time, and I put the most love in, but it probably has the least amount of usage. For enterprises, uh, I would say most people are hobbyists, but there are some enterprises using it. And how they use it is for this microsite thing I was talking about, where they have this use case where they're like, I need to make a thousand sites <laughs> using like one base template, mm -hmm. and I need to host it for very cheap or free, and I just need to launch them and move on. Like in the marketing world, this is super common. So that's the enterprise use case. I think. Uh, I think it would be hard for an enterprise marketing team to lose the that edited production quality. I mean, this is a problem for all static site generators. It's really hard to tell them like, no, you can't just edit the front page whenever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, why? This sucks. You know, they're not, they're not fans. So, yep, that's cool. Um, and I thought the I thought it was cool that you you did a the project um, where you can actually export the content to Git. So that's a there's there's another project that I've, I've used called Netlify CMS. It's not not the platform Netlify, but they have an open source project that is like a Git pack CMS. And the uh, the the default way to use that is it stores everything in content, like all the uh, sorry all the content in Git. Um, and I always liked that, but I, I had, had some people when I first was showing off, I, like way back, I think it was like 2017 or 2018, I was showing some demos at this group. 
um, about that. And some people had a lot of trouble with the idea of putting all their content into something like that, like a central repository or Git, and they thought it'd be messy. Or they really just, I don't know what their exact criticisms are. So I'm curious, have you noticed any like, like when when does that fall flat? Like, is it like when the content gets really big, it becomes unwieldy? Is it just like the the mixture of like not being able to tell where your code edits and content edits are? Like, where did you find any challenges with that, or have you heard other feedback that people have yeah. trouble with it? Good, good question. Um, I would say one thing that makes Tome different from other static side generators is the export is not human readable because it's JSON. Like, that's just typically not. Uh, you know, if new lines are like escaped. There's no way you're like manually editing escaped JSON, probably. Mm -hmm. So it's not human readable. You're really supposed to like edit it in Drupal, and because of that, people don't uh, they don't think about the export, or they look at it and say, "This is gross. I'm never looking again," or something. You know, if you're only editing in Drupal, you don't think about it. Um, I think the hangup is that uh, Git is really hard to use. I mean, it's like even for developers, it's hard to use. So. Uh, stuff like merge conflicts are extremely common. So let's say you have like a front page piece of content and you have a marketing team. You cannot have a situation where two people like open a branch, make an edit to like the body field and the merge conflict goes smoothly. Like Git, Git doesn't know how to resolve things at that level. You have to use some sort of a, there's something called like, I'm going to use the wrong term, but there's engines you can use to help you with merging and you can do like stuff that makes JSON a bit easier. But Imagine coming from a normal CMS and then saying, like, now your marketing team has to open branches and pull requests. I mean, just it's like a non-starter for, for enterprises. So that's the big problem is that Git, Git is a huge hangout. Yeah. Awesome. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah, I got a question. Um, so I mean, obviously, you know, um, stack sites bring a lot of speed and security and all that. But, you know, you run into these situations where it's like, OK, let's just say like 90 or 95% of our users or usage is going to be you know, basically anonymous, but then like, Hey, we've got comments or we've got, you know, whatever, you know, we've got guest bloggers and all of a sudden it's like, well, actually we do really want a, a CMS. You know, if you're using like a Gatsby or like a next JS, um, you know, with, with Drupal sitting on the back end, you can do that, but you're then basically building a whole custom interface in terms of your authenticated experience using React. Um, in terms of uh, Toom, is there anything that that brings to the table in terms of like, yeah, you know, like 95% of the time users are logged out, it's great. But if I want to have an authenticated experience, um, or is it kind of in the same boat as like Gatsby and, and Next.js where it's like, okay, you know, build it yourself. <laughs> yeah, so, so if you just use so one thing I'll say just in terms of the like rebuilding it from scratch is that uh, all the HTML generated by Tome is what you would normally get in Drupal if you were just like running a Drupal site and hitting the page. So in that way, you don't have to rewrite interfaces. I think what you would have to do to accomplish what you're talking about is only use that static site generator half. Don't use the like commit content to Git half. And then run a Drupal site somewhere and do something clever with your, your routing where you say, OK, hit the edge. If it doesn't start with slash admin, I'm going to go to the static site. If it starts with slash admin or login or whatever, it's going to go to Drupal. And then you can kind of split the traffic that way. I think that's that's probably the best thing. So what you lose there is the security, because now you're opening it up to the public internet. Um, but you still have the performance, because probably most users aren't going to like try to DOS you at slash admin. But that's possible now. Um, yeah. And then do something where it's like, um, on a content update, regenerate the uh, the site and push it out to wherever it's being hosted. Yeah, I usually tell people to use cron because one thing that's really hard uh, with this, but that may not be hard for other things, is that when you edit like one piece of content, you may think that's one page, but you also have like search, you have like listing of content. It, it could you have menus. It could appear in many many places. So a lot of people ask me, like, when I press save, just regenerate that page. But really, you may be asking to regenerate like 20 pages. Um, so anyway, I'm just trying to say, uh, yeah, I usually say people just use cron. Because if you have a lot of editing, especially, you may as well just regenerate it on a known schedule than trying to be really clever about when you do it. So.
The project's very cool, Sam. Uh, thanks so much for coming and pre presenting on it. Um, I've, I've definitely, you know, being in the Drupal community, I've heard a lot of people uh, talking about it over, over time. So it's cool to, to hear um, from your mouth. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me.